What up, guys? It is Makoa Goble here with Low Kick MMA, and today I'm joined by the one and only Damon Jackson. Damon, how are you doing, my man? Doing good, man. How you doing? Dude, I'm feeling awesome. I'm glad to be joined by you today. I'm excited to talk. Um, let's talk Bryce Mitchell. You know, I think that's one of the most prominent things. You've been pushing for the fight with Bryce Mitchell, but unfortunately, it now appears he has been matched up with Toporia. What was your reaction when you heard that news? Um, you know, I was just willing to step in. It was just an opportunity I was trying to take advantage of. You know, it wasn't like a, it wasn't like a, I didn't deserve to have the fight or anything. Like I, if they would have gave me the fight months ago and he would have, you know, whatever. It's just like I was ready to go. Um, and I feel like that would have been his best chance to beat me as if it was a short notice fight. So I was just ready to step in and I thought that he was going to take it. And uh, I was really hoping because I wanted one more fight this year. And, um, you know, I want that matchup really bad, too. So it was uh, it would have been just a great opportunity. And I was just trying to step in. It wasn't like uh, there was nothing planned out with that. It was just I saw an opportunity to step in. My manager was hitting them up, trying to get in. And um, they wanted to make the fight with him and Ilya. But Ilya couldn't make weight because he, you know, he walks around a little, little bit bigger. Um, you know, tough kid for sure. And, and it, they want that fight. They want those two guys fighting for sure. And, um, you know, it just I was hoping to hoping to get the fight. But there were just you know small talks with you know me and the matchmaker in the UFC just kind of small back and forth but um they want that fight to be matched up so that's why they push it for December yeah and uh um, you're on an incredible winning streak right now do you think you deserve to be in the rankings and do you believe that the fact that you're not in the rankings has impacted the chances of you getting that fight with Mitchell yeah, I mean, definitely you don't want to, you know, if you're number, if you're number 10, you don't want to fight the number 15 or 16 guy, you want to fight number eight or nine guys. So it just sucks when, when guys like when you go through I and I understand Mitchell, his side of things too, because it's like you go through your whole training camp and then you, you know, you're, you're so focused on one, one guy. And then like at the very end, someone pulls out and I've just kind of learned over the years to kind of like not pay attention to really who's on the other side. Like I get a good game plan together for sure. And I work on a lot of things that I'm, you know, messing up on or I'm not looking good in and practice and stuff. So I work on things that build myself up, but for, for when you guys switch game plans like that and fight someone in a different style, it's, it's a lot to take in. So I understand him not wanting to fight and him wanting to, you know, wait for the timing for everything to fight someone else and wanting to fight someone with a good ranking. So, um, you know, I'm just kind of, want to take advantage of the opportunity and it just didn't happen so i'm just trying to get one more lined up and last question about that how do you think the fight plays out between mitchell and toporia um you know i haven't really seen topora in like um you know a big three round battle so maybe his cardio will be tested i don't know um but you know mitchell's a tough dude on the ground for sure and i think he's gonna have a little bit of a harder time getting topora down but, you know, if he if he hangs in there and gets past the first first round, then I think the second and third round, he has a pretty good chance of uh, controlling him and doing certain things. But um, and, you know, and it could be one of those things where both guys are good grapplers. So it could be a good stand up fight. And um, I think that Tapor is definitely he's got the power. He's got the speed. Um, there's a lot of things that Mitchell's got to watch out for. But, you know, Mitchell's. He's not undefeated for no reason. So it's kind of like, you know, like I'll, if I ever talk smack about him or about Tapora, it's just because I'm, you know, I'm just, it's like I want to get in there and mix it up with him. And uh, so like taking that loss to Ilya early on, I was, um, was not expecting the fight to be like that. I thought it was going to be a lot more grappling. So he caught me and I was not ready for that fight, that, that style of fight. So it would have been nice to get back in there with him. But um, you know, whoever, whoever they match me up with, whatever day it is, uh, I'm going to be ready to go. So hopefully, hopefully that fight actually goes out and I get to see, uh, what Ilya looks like against Mitchell. I think he wins the fight, but, um, I think it's going to be a tough fight for sure. Yeah. And it's, it seems like you're interested in running it back with Toporia one day. How do you think that fight would play out nowadays? It, it would be completely different just because, uh, you know, it's like once you get that that look at, at someone, you know, like, you know, what what they have, like, you know, their abilities and what they do have and stuff. He, he's a he's a talented kid for sure. Um, you know, I haven't taken a lot of losses. So it was kind of, um, you know, it was, it's definitely a hard one to eat when you get back in the UFC like that. And then to take a loss, it, you know, it's frustrating for sure. But he's tough. He, he'll be he'll be in the top top five for sure. I think he'll be in there soon. I think he beats Mitchell and then I think he goes on to fight maybe um 
you know, I don't even know. Like, I don't know who's who's available for him to fight. You know, maybe early March next year he'll fight again, and he'll be in the top five for sure. Right. And uh, let's talk about the Pat Sabatini fight. You know, you came into that fight as a massive underdog status, but you ended yeah. up kind of starching him in the first round. How awesome was that for you uh, to come in with the underdog status and then get that win? And did it put a chip on your shoulder or give you any extra motivation? Um, there's a lot of times where, you know, I've been the underdog and come out there and I'm like, what are you guys talking about? You know, I kind of saw that from the beginning. So whenever they, when they had me down as the underdog, I was just like, you know, like, come on, man. Like, whatever. I just like, it, it's, it's not, I don't ever prove myself to anyone else. Like, I don't ever think about it a whole lot, but I do think it's kind of funny because I have so many, like, I mean, hundreds of people sent me their bet, their betting slip and showed me that they won money off of me. And like, they were, you know, so appreciative of it. And, uh, you know, I just kind of like, you know, I'm like, I'm 22 and four, you know, it's like, and I have, I have uh, 19 finishes or 20 or night. I think I have 19 finishes, 15 subs. And I'm like, dude, like, uh, give me a break. You know, it's like, um, you know, it's whatever. I just got to keep winning fights at this point. You know, I'm not trying to, I'm trying to get out there and, you know, fight the best guys and uh, for them to give me an underdog, it's going to be, you know, razor thin decisions on all those, all, like whenever they come out, those odds, it's, they're always just so close. You have like, you know, three out of three out of five guys make it, you know, for him. And so then they give him the, you know, negative 150, whatever. And I say so it wasn't like, it was a big underdog. It was just kind of like, I was like, come on, man. Like, you know, this doesn't like, look at the, it doesn't make sense, but you know, he's from that gym. I forget the name of the gym, but they were on a win streak. And so I think that that builds up a lot of momentum for someone to have a good camp, but, I'm like, at the end of the day, like you look at Fortis MMA and like what we've done, um, it's not shocking to me to go out there and get a finish like that. And it's not shocking to my teammates when they saw me get the finish. They're like, yeah, we see that, you know, in practice. And that's why I look at my teammates when they get big, big wins. I'm kind of like, yeah, you know, we, this is who we see every day. Like I know this guy, you know, but it is what it is. I got to go out there and keep winning. That's right, man. And talking about winning, Four in a row right now. I mean, gigantic winning streak. You're on fire. Uh, and your first UFC tenure didn't really go as planned. What's it like for you to be on such an impressive winning streak after everything you went through to get back to the UFC? And, uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Sorry, I was going to freestyle one yeah, right there. No, no, that's good. Um, You know, like, a lot of people don't realize it. But, like, when I first started, uh, when I first made a pro debut, I had my first nine fights in a year and a half. So I made it into the UFC with like such little training. Like, you know, I was, I was doing a lot of jujitsu in college and stuff, but that like all my amateur fights, um, all I did, I sparred with my friends in the wrestling room and I did jujitsu with this kid from Brazil that was playing soccer um, at my school. So that was, that was my training for all of my amateur fights. And I had seven amateur fights and I went pro as soon as I was at a uh, college and, um, you know, I made my debut and then I just kept fighting like every month, month and a half. Like it was like, back to back and uh, it was crazy. And and then once I made it in, I beat Leonard Garcia and I couldn't believe it. And then they pulled me in and I just at the time, you know, I was like, yeah, let's go. You know, I'm ready to go. And you know, I didn't realize it, but I just didn't know anything. So to come back through and have a big win streak like this and to make it back after all these years, um, you know, it's, it's really cool. It's really special to me and, and my coach. Yeah, I've had the same coach since like when I made it in the first time. And then when I got cut, he's been my same coach from the beginning. And then also like, you know, me having my, you know, my, I have four daughters and they've all seen me. Um, when I made it to the UFC, they, they were there. And then when I got cut, they were there, they sell me work my way back. So it's just like such a cool experience. You know, like my wife used to hold pass for me and like, you know, while I was in college, you know, just small things like that to see all these people around me from the beginning and to make it back is pretty cool. That's awesome, man. And I remember what I was going to ask you now. I was going to say, do you think the UFC let you go too soon? And um, oh, I'm sorry. Is, do you think they let you go too soon? No, I mean, yeah, you could say whatever you could. Yeah, like for me, selfishly, I would be like, yeah, they should have kept me around. But at the same time, like, I don't know a whole lot of the guys that I could have went in there and, um, and beat, you know, like I couldn't have had like a big win streak like I have now. So me getting cut and going to LFA, it's like, you know, it was just such a builder, you know, for me, it was like, as soon as I got cut, I literally like 
the first week I got cut, I, you know, I contacted um, Nick Maynard was the matchmaker at the time for, or he was the owner of LFA. And, and then I called Ed Swords as soon as they switched over. And I was like, Hey, you know, like I want to fight as soon as I can get one. And they gave me a fight as soon as I got my papers and they said I was released. I got a fight like two or three weeks later. And then I fought, um, you know, I don't know how many times I fought, you know, a lot, like, you know, 10 or 11 times um, outside the UFC after I got cut. And, you know, that was, I learned a lot from that and got a lot of experience. So, um, and then when I got back in, now you guys, you know, you see all the stuff that I've been working on and, um, you know, I'm just taking advantage of it now. Nice. And with one more win in 2022, you'll have the most amount of wins this year, possibly tied with Jilton Almeida. Is Does this serve as extra motivation for you, or is this something that you're not even really concerned about at all? Uh, honestly, I didn't even I didn't even know that was like uh, I knew I I knew I'd been busy, and I knew that like things like I had to obviously I knew I had four or five win streak, whatever, but like, for me, it's like, I haven't fought enough this year. Like I wanted to fight, um, you know, I wanted to fight a month ago. I wanted to fight, you know, like as soon as my fight was over, I wanted to fight like within that month, you know, it was just like, uh, for me, like, I, I just, I do a lot better mentally and physically when I'm like training for a fight or if I have a, a date in mind, or if I have an opponent in mind and stuff, you know, it's like, I just like to stay busy. So I would love to get one more in and I would getting that, you know, four or five, five, five win streak. That would be freaking amazing. And to do four fights in one year, four wins in one year would be just unreal. It'd be really cool. A lot of momentum for sure. Yeah. That would be an awesome way to start out your 2023. And who do you want to fight next? I think I saw, uh, you said something about Edson Barbosa maybe. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, I was kind of just messing around. I was like, uh, just, in my mouth a little bit because I don't have a fight that's what happens it's like when I don't have a fight I start talking crap but uh you know for me it's like anybody from you know from Bryce, Bryce Mitchell up you know I want that fight you know if it's Edson if it's Yusuf it's Danny Inge um Alex Conceres like any of those guys like if they're one to get one more in this year and I know Danny Inge is always down to go so maybe that's the fight to make I don't know but uh you know, I, I want one more in this year and I want someone to call me out because I'm like, I, I don't want to be the asshole that's sitting here, you know, talking smack to everybody. And, you know, I, I just don't like that look. You know, I would rather someone call me out and I'd be like, let's go, you know, whatever. So um, maybe one of those guys will call me out. But, you know, if not, I'm I'm already on the matchmakers and I'm already on, um, you know, my manager daily. I'm, I guarantee if you hit my manager up, he'd be like, yeah, Damon's amazing, but he's also annoying. So. <laughs> but I'm always ready to go. He knows that he can call me whenever he needs someone to step in and I'll be there for sure. Nice. Real fighter mentality right there. And uh, this weekend is a massive fight in your division. Do you got yeah. uh, Allen or Cater? I mean, what's your take on Ooh. that fight? It's it's hard to kind of bet against Allen, honestly, because he he's very conservative and he, he doesn't he point system wise like he's a very smart fighter. So it's kind of hard to like bet against him, but then you see Cater and that dude, he's freaking, uh, he's been in some wars too. So maybe that, that takes a little bit of play into it, but I think, I think Allen wins it. I think it's not going to be a crazy slugfest. I think he's too smart to, you know, take that damage. And um, I think he wins the fight, but I think it's going to be a pretty close fight because, you know, Cater's tough as hell and he's, he's a smart fighter himself, but I think that Allen wins it but just because he's, He's more intelligent of a fighter. and He's not going to take that damage like Cater does. So um, I think he wins the fight, though. I think it'll be a decision. I think it's going to be a, a boring decision. I think he's going to push him on the cage. He's going to get him on the ground. It's like whatever. I don't think it's going to be a slow fest. I think that uh, it'll be a boring decision. And that's just that's Arnold Allen's style, just boring. <laughs> Man, that was a great breakdown. And what did you think of TJ Dillashaw fighting with an injury last weekend? I can't stand that dude. I, you know, I don't even care. Like he run his mouth, say his shoulders hurt, say whatever's hurt. I don't give a crap, man. I was hoping that he got, I was hoping that he lost the fight and I, and I don't ever like want someone to lose. I, I don't watch fights on TV and like, Oh, I want this guy to lose, you know, like if he's one of those guys, just what he's done with the sport, just so disgraceful. And I can't believe that the UFC is still, you know, kind of pressing him and stuff. I'm like, dude, just let him go. Like, let him go to some other promotion and take whatever he wants to take and do whatever he has to do to feel like he's, a, you know, tough, whatever. I mean, I just like, it's mind blowing to me that, um, you know, he's such a great athlete. I mean, he did some great stuff before that. 
And then for him to like stoop to that level and, and um, you know, he can say that he just was competing and he was super competitive and say all this stuff like that. But I'm like, dude, you still cheated like that, man. It's not, it's not cool. Not when you're punching someone in the face, man. Not when that's the sport. If it's any other sport, like catching a football or something, maybe you want to cheat, whatever. No one, like people are going to get pissed if you catch the ball more, whatever. But like you're punching someone in the face and they're taking life, you know, that's damage for life no matter what. No matter how little or how much it is, it's still damage for life. So it's kind of like it's almost you you expect someone to get charges put on them. Like you don't, you can't cheat like that. It's, it's messed up, but not a big fan of him. So I was, you know, didn't really care. I was kind of, when I saw Aljamain start, you know, smashing, I was like, oh yeah, he's got it. He's got it. And, um, you know, I wasn't surprised, honestly. Um, you know, anybody that does that, uh, you know, mentally that they're a little bit weak. Yeah. And uh, kind of a double-sided question here. Do you think that there needs to be a stricter punishment for um, PED infractions? And another thing is, is it worse that he's kind of embraced it at this point and just kind of, you know, like his comment at the press conference, like you're going to lose to a cheater, stuff like that. Is that worse than the yeah. guys who were like, oh, tainted horse meat, you know? Yeah, I don't know, man. Honestly, I really don't know. Because I'm like, yeah, it's cool. Like whatever he's admitting to it. But like at the end of the day, it's like, uh, like you still, you know, you you had that championship. You had all the stuff that you put into play. And who knows how many people are really cheating and stuff. But like the way that he did it and just, you know, him – um, yeah, I'm just not a big fan of the way that he, he handled the whole thing. And I, and I really hate seeing that there's so much support behind him and that he's actually getting these interviews. He's actually getting all this stuff. And I'm like, you know, like, yeah, whatever he cheated. And like, you know, you can say that you can look past it, whatever, but it's like for him to do that and then to get another chance to step in there. I'm like, you know, it's just kind of like, you know, he needed, he, sh I feel like he should have been released, you know, release, go on fight somewhere else, do whatever you want. Cause it's like, once anyone leaves the UFC, they just kind of die. So it's like for him to get released, that would have been the ultimate punishment because he could have never been a true world champion. I feel like if you, if you want to be a real world champion, you have to be in the UFC because there's no other promotion that's as great as them. So for him to get to stick around and compete at that level and then to kind of come in and fight Corey Samhagen like that, and then to go straight into another title shot, I'm like, you know, it's not not a good look. I don't. I didn't like it, but whatever. Yeah. Um, well, that's all the questions I've got for you today. Thank you so much for your time. And do you have any shout outs uh, before we go? No, man. I just, uh, you know, just shout. Like, I appreciate everybody's support. You know, like you guys hit me up for the interviews and stuff. It's cool. You know, it just helps me get the stuff out there without having to talk a whole lot of crap. So. Hopefully, uh, I get a matchup out of this, and we'll go from there. But uh, no, I appreciate all the support. And, yeah. Thank you so much, man. All right, guys, we're out. Peace. Make sure to subscribe to the Low Kick MMA YouTube channel for all the latest news, event previews, and interviews with some of the biggest stars in MMA.